Howdy, hey, what's McDonald going to teach us today? It's all going to be exponents and logarithmic functions. What's McDonald taking away? Thank you. That was great. It rhymed with everything. I love that. You're so good. That was really good. You should write that down. We should do that same intro every day. Okay, he's writing down. Okay, exponential functions we're starting with. Um, a lot of what we're going to do today should be completely 100% review. Actually, a lot of the things in this chapter are going to be reviewed. You guys have learned about logs before you've learned about exponents. We might get a little more in-depth with it than what you've done in the past, um, but a, a good chunk of it's going to be reviewed, so that should be nice. All right, so we're going to start with basic exponential function. f of x equals a to the x power where a is some constant. a is going to have a couple conditions on it. a must be a positive number, not equal to 1 for it to be an exponential function. Um, and a couple reasons for that. It's got to look like an exponential growth or decay function, which we'll talk about a little bit later, those curve shapes. If you have a number that is equal to 0 or 1 there, it's just going to look like a horizontal line. 0 to any power is 0, and 1 to any power is 1. So that wouldn't look exponential. Also, if A is a negative number, we know negative numbers to even powers are going to be positive, and negative numbers to odd powers are going to be negative. So if you had a negative number to a power, the graph would look like it's jumping. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. Um, so that would not fit our exponential definition. So it's got to be positive, and it can't equal 1. Uh, the domain of these graphs, the values for x are going to be all real numbers. There's nothing that you can't plug in there. Zeros, positives, negatives, decimals, fractions. It's all good. Okay. Um, first thing we're going to do is just evaluate, and this is going to be a little uh, practice with our exponential rules that you guys learned back in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. Uh, f of x equals 2 to the x minus 5 power, and we're evaluating for f of 4. I'm just going to plug 4 in for x, and then we're going to simplify. Treat the exponent kind of like a parenthesis. You want to do that part first for the order of operations. So 4 minus 5 gives me negative 1. Do you remember what negative exponents do to a number? They flip it. So think of this like 2 to the negative first over 1 right now. If I take a reciprocal, so pretty much moving that 2 to the negative first to the bottom, I end up with a positive exponent. And that rule works the same way. Um, if you had a number in the denominator with a negative exponent, you can move it to the no, uh, numerator. It makes it positive. And then 2 to the first is, of course, just 2. So 1 half is our answer there. Okay. Let's try this one. f of x equals negative 3 times 10 to the x. And we are evaluating for f of negative 2. Again, we're going to try to do this without a calculator if we can. Negative 3 times 10 to the negative second. 10 to the negative second is equal to what? Decimal. 1 over... 100, 1 over 10 squared, right? And that gives me 100. And then negative 3 times 1 one hundredth is negative 3 over 100. Now, if you just type in negative 3 times 10 to the negative second in your calculator, calculator is just going to give you the decimal version of that, the negative 0 0.03, which for this problem is exact, so that's fine. Okay, let's try the next one. f of x equals 1 seventh to the x power for f of 1 third. So, 1 7th to the 1 3rd power. Um, when you have a fraction taken to a power, that power applies to both the numerator and the denominator, or it applies to the whole fraction itself, whatever I guess is more convenient depending on the numbers you're given. Um, 1 3rd power is the same as what? Cube root, right? These 1 over a number, 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, 1 fifth, those are our roots. 1 half is a square root, 1 third is a cube root for this example. So I could write it like this. I could apply it to the whole fraction, or I could apply that one, uh, cube root, 1 third power, to the numerator and denominator separately. Now here it's ideal to be able to do that because I can at least simplify the top now. The cube root of 1 is 1. Cube root of 7, it's not something we're going to simplify, um, and we're not going to worry about rationalizing if there's a cube root. Rationalizing means get rid of that radical on the bottom. We're just going to leave it. Okay. All right, and then last one. f of x equals 4 to the x power. We're evaluating for f of negative 3 halves. So 
4 to the negative 3 halves power. Um, when you have a fraction exponent where the numerator is not 1, you can think of it as two different things happening. We have a root, that 2 on the bottom is a square root, and then we have a power of a negative 3. So when I see these, I write them as two different um, exponents, 4 to the 1 half, and then a parenthesis, negative 3. This was one of your exponent rules. It's actually um, the opposite order from how you usually used it in the past. This is called the power to a power rule, where if exponents are separated with the parentheses, you can multiply them together. 1 half times negative 3 is negative 3 halves. They are equivalent. But this makes it easier for me to simplify now. 4 to the 1 half means square root of 4, which is what? 2. And then that I can take to the negative third power. It's the same as 1 over 2 to the third. And what is 2 to the third? 8. So 1 eighth is how that simplifies. And depending on what numbers you're given, um, sometimes it's easier to do the power first and then the root. Okay. Um, any questions on evaluating or any of our exponent properties here? Does this all look familiar to you? Hopefully. Um, when you log into MathXL, do not panic when there are 30 questions on MathXL. Many of them are short, quick questions like this. I would say the majority of your homework are short, quick questions in this whole chapter, in fact. Okay, so fair warning, there will be more than normal, but many of them will be just one quick answer and then you move on with your life. Okay. All right, next thing we're going to do is graph exponential functions. Pretty much every graph we do in this chapter will be um, just with an xy table, plotting points. Okay, and we're going to start with an easy one. f of x equals 2 to the x power. Because the domain of these is all real numbers, you can pick any x values you want. If it's me, I'm choosing negative 2 to 2. It gives me something that's happening right in the middle, a couple negatives, a couple positives, zeros. Um, and then you can always, again, extend your table one direction or the other if you want some more points. Plug them in. You should be able to do this in your head. What is 2 to the negative second power? 1 fourth. It's 1 over 2 squared. 1 fourth. 2 to the negative first? 1 half. 2 to the 0, or anything to the 0 power, is 1. 2 to the first? And 2 squared is 4. Plot my points. And connect the dots. You should see a curve. You will have asymptotes on these graphs. Um, here the asymptote is going to be the axis there, so you make sure you just don't want to cross that. What type of exponential curve is this? special way we can define that. Exponential what? Growth. 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 Yeah. This is what we call a growth curve. It's increasing from left to right. Good. You guys try the next one with your partner. I'll give you a minute. F of X equals two-thirds to the X power. Fill out the table, plot the point, name what kind of curve you see. All right, you should have nine fourths, three halves, one, two thirds, four ninths. How'd you do? Everybody get the nine fourths, okay? You're doing two thirds, oops, positive two thirds to the negative second. So it's two to the negative second over three to the negative second. And because they're both negative, you can flip the whole fraction. 3 moves to the top, 3 squared, the 2 moves to the bottom, 2 squared, 3 squared is 9, 2 squared is 4. Okay? Alright, and then graph should look something like this, which is what kind of curve? Decay. How can you tell from the original equation that it's going to be growth or decay? Do you remember how to do that? Well, if the A is it, if A is all greater than 1, it's growth. And we say a less than 1 is going to be decay. And remember, a can't be negative. So technically, that a is between 0 and 1, right? Um, because it can't be a negative value if it's exponential. But that's what we're looking for. It's the base. If the base is bigger than 1, it's growing. If the base is smaller than 1, between 0 and 1, it's going to decay. All right, next slide. We're going to name some properties of these graphs. Exponential growth and exponential decay. I've got basic pictures of both of them here. Um, I've given you a different version 
of the basic equation because this is probably the one you guys have done in Algebra 2. Does this look familiar? Y equals A times B to the X power. Um, when you were writing equations or solving various things in Algebra 2, you probably used this because A represents an initial value of starting amount and B then represents your growth rate. So from that starting value, you either grow or decay. Um, that A value is important because it is an intercept on the graph. Okay, and then again, it's growing if the P here is bigger than 1 and decaying if it's between 0 and 1. Um, down below, I've got six properties of each that I want you guys to list. Domain, range, the asymptote, any intercepts. Even, odd, neither. Quick review of that. What does even mean? What type of symmetry? Remember what even is? Over the y-axis. And odd is what kind of symmetry? Origin. And neither is neither. Right? And then end behavior. All right. I'm going to give you a few minutes. There are enough of you that everybody's going to put a property up on the board in a few minutes here. Okay, so work with your partner, name the properties of each, and then we'll put them up together. All the properties are pretty much the same except for the very end. Your um, end behaviors are just switched left and the right, but everything else should be the same. Any questions on any of our properties? Growth and decay. Yes, can you? I'm going to skip around here a little bit. Um, I want to do one more graph. So here we have a graph of an exponential function that some transformations have occurred. So the stretches, string, shifts, all that good stuff. We are still just graphing with an XY table though. Okay. We're not going to get into how to graph with zeros and all that sort of thing because often we don't have zeros. We don't have enough uh, properties that vary to be able to get a distinct graph. So instead, we plot points, we see what happens. The most important thing that we're going to try to figure out from this xy table is where the asymptote is. You can figure out where the asymptote is, then you know what line you are not supposed to cross, and that makes it a little easier to get your picture. So when I make my table, I still start with those same values, but I leave a little space on either side. We, we might need to, depending on what shifts and transformations have occurred, extend the table one way or the other to really find that asymptote. Um, so I'm just going to plug them in. Again, you could use even a basic calculator if you want it on the test for something like this. You can probably do it in your head though, especially for these values. If I plug in negative 2, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. 3 to the negative first power is 1 third, times 2 is 2 thirds, minus 1 is negative 1 third. If I plug in negative 1, I'm going to have a 0 power. 3 to the 0 is 1, times 2 is 2, minus 1. If I plug in 0, I'm going to have a first power. 3 to the first is 3, times 2 is 6, minus 1 is 5. If I plug in 1, I'm going to have a second power. 3 squared gives me 9, times 2 is 18, minus 1 gives me 17. Um, you can see that my y's are not getting closer and closer together. We're not approaching a certain number. They're actually getting bigger and bigger. So this is going in the wrong direction. I'm going to plug in 2 because I know it's going to be something bigger than 17. It's not going to be on my graph anyway. I'm going to instead plug in negative 3 see what's going on the other direction here. If I plug in negative 3, I'm going to have a negative second power. 
3 to the negative second power is 1 ninth. Times 2 is 2 ninths. Minus 1 is negative 7 ninths. I'm going to do one more for good measure here, negative 4. That will give me a negative third power. 3 to the negative third is 1 27. Times 2 is 2 27. Minus 1 is negative 25 27. What are these y's getting closer and closer to? Not zero. Negative one. Yeah. And you can always plug in a few more if you're not sure, but y equals negative one, that's our asymptote. Okay, when they start getting closer and closer together and approaching a certain number, um, that's our asymptote. And you can also a lot of times see that in the equation. It depends what transformations have happened. But you see the little minus one? That means a shift down one. So imagine our basic graph, if we shift it down one unit, our asymptote is going to shift down one unit. So a lot of times you can use that as a clue. All right, plotting my points, I just need to make sure I do not cross y equals negative 1. You want to make sure you know that before you graph it. 0, 5, 117 is way up there, negative 1, 1, negative 2, negative 1 third, something like that. So is this growth or decay? It's a growth function. You can see that from that base as well, right? The base of 3 is bigger than 1. Can you tell me the domain of this function? All real numbers. Is that ever going to change? No, it is not. Range of this function is what? It's the lowest the graph is going to get to or get close to. Negative 1 up to infinity. Um, what's the intercept? I actually have a couple intercepts here, right? With the y-intercepts, don't worry about the x one, that's going to be too hard. With the y-intercepts, 5. Um, can you tell me the end behaviors? x approaches negative infinity, x approaches positive infinity. What's happening on the left? y is approaching what? Negative 1. Negative 1. On the right, what's y approaching? Positive infinity, good. Okay, the other thing I want you to do for this problem is name the transformations that happened on 3 to the x. So 3 to the x is the basic function, which means that little 3 up there when you're naming the transformations is not something that actually changes the graph. It was in the original graph, whatever that base is. The other things that have been added to this equation are the 2, the plus 1, and the x one and the minus 1. Each of those has performed a transformation. Now, we did this way back in Chapter 2. I think it was Section 2-7. We had that big table. Remember with the a, b, c, d, and it said what's what? Now, it's going to look a little different in an exponential function. Anything that's happening inside the function is happening in the power. So the power is where you're going to find the b's, which are the horizontal stretches and shrinks, and the c's, which are the left-right shifts. Those are happening in the exponent. The vertical stuff and the shifts up and down, that's going to happen outside of the exponent. So what does the 2 out front do to this graph? Stretch, shrink, shift. What do you think? We had a 2 outside of any equation before and it was multiplied. What did it do? Stretch. What kind of stretch? Vertical. Vertical. Stretch. What does the plus 1 inside the function do, inside the exponent? It is a horizontal shift. 1, which direction? Left or right? The left. Those are the ones that were different, right? And then at the very end, the minus 1 does what? mentioned earlier. Down one. Now I'm asking you to name these because a couple of the problems in Math Excel are going to ask you to graph using transformations. Remember you've seen problems like that before where you have to click the little boxes in order and Math Excel will do the transformation for you. Yeah. So you'll have to select vertical stretch and then you'll have to type in two and then left and then you'll have to type in one, that sort of thing. Um, but I would again, if it was Math Excel, graph in your calculator hit the buttons and make sure your picture on your screen matches what it should be in the calculator before you hit check answer. Okay, don't waste a trial. Yeah. All right, now you also see some problems like this that are just the opposite, where you're given a basic function, you're given the transformation, and you have to write this. We've done this before. So you're just adding numbers to the equation to make sure these transformations happen. Here I am starting with y equals 2 to the x power. Just writing it makes out a little space. If I want this graph to go two units to the left, 
What do I need to put where to make sure that happens? I need to do what, Justin? Uh, plus two next to the X. Perfect. The plus two would be inside the power. So that's the cap net. And then I want to do what else? Move it five up. So what else do I need to put in my equation to make sure that happens? Uh, you add five outside. Plus five, not in the exponent, out front on, or on the back, something like that. That's all you have to do for these problems. Okay? Try these two with your partner. I'll just give you like one minute. These are super quick. Write the equation of the transformed exponential function. You need to look back at these rules. These were in section 2-7. <coughs> Those are still on Polaris if you don't have them. This one you should have y equals 3. You should have an x minus 3. And then you should have a negative out front of that. Remember those um, horizontal stretches and uh, shrinks and the reflection over the y-axis? Those in the basic form were factored away from the x. If you put anything in front of that x, you need to put parentheses around any quantity you have there. Or you could distribute it in. If you have negative x plus 3, it's the same thing. Um, and then this one, you should have y equals 2 for the vertical stretch, 1 half to the x power, and then a minus 5 at the end to shift it 5 units down. Question there. Okay. Um, our last two problems today are just finding the equation of an exponential function given a couple points. It's just a matter of plugging things in and solving. So can I flip this? Okay. Right, let me flip back here. We're going to start with this one. Given a basic version of an exponential function, so here f of x equals a to the x plus b. There's been some uh, vertical shift up or down that's happened. We want to write an equation that contains the point negative 2, 6, and 0, 3. And then once we have the equation, we'll compute, we'll evaluate f of 4. Pretty much you want to find um, any variable that's in here except for x and y. You need to find a and b in this case. If you have a and b, you have the equation. The only thing that you can do if you have points is plug those points in. This is not a line. This is not something that we can find slope of. The only thing you can do is plug the points in. And I'm going to start with whatever the easiest point that looks like is. 0, 3 looks pretty easy. So I'm going to plug 3 in for y and 0 in for x. And remember, the goal here is we need to figure out what a and b are. What is anything to the zero power? One. So now I have three equals one plus b, and therefore b equals two. Okay, so I have half of what I need. So I'm going to go back to my original equation now and say f of x equals a to the x plus two. I know that. The only other piece of information I have is that other point. So I'm going to use it. Six equals a to the negative second plus 2. How do I solve for A? First step, what would you do? Subtract the 2. Do you remember how to get rid of a power equation? How do you get rid of a square root? Square, right? And square root's what power? Square root is what power? One half. So one half power, square root, is canceled out by a square. Right? So let's use that logic to help us. 
So if a one half and a square cancel each other out, what, how are those numbers related? This one R. Reciprocals. You just need to use reciprocal. Now the only difference is you're not multiplying by a reciprocal on both sides, you're taking both sides to that power. What's the reciprocal of negative two? Negative a half. And again, both sides are taken to that power. So here it's power to a power. You multiply and you get one. So I'm just left with A. Over there, you need to do four to the negative one half power. Well, what's four to the positive one half power? Two, right? Because it means square root of four, so it's two. But it's a negative power, so the negative power does what? Flips it, one half. So my equation is f of x equals, fill in my A, half, fill in my B, two. So that was the first part of the question. Second part of the question should now be easy. Find f of 4. 1 half to the 4th plus 2. What is 1 half to the 4th power? 1 16th. 1 to the 4th over 2 to the 4th. Plus 2 is 33 16th. Make sense? Okay, just have one more problem like this and then we'll wrap it up for us. Um, this one, you do not have to evaluate anything. You just have to find the C and the A. Okay. Uh, again, I'm giving two points. All I can do is plug them in. Uh, which one do you want to start with? 1-1 one, one or 2-1-5? One, 1-1? Okay, sure. Seems easier. Uh, all right. Notice the basic version has changed here a little bit. anything to the first power itself. So I have 1 equals C times A. Nothing I can solve for. No, two variables. All right, I'm just going to plug in my other point. 1 fifth equals C times A squared. Anything we can solve for. Still two variables, right? So I have two equations with the same two variables. What is that called? System of equations, which you can solve using elimination, which is gross, or substitution. Substitution we've done before together is where you get a variable alone in one equation and then plug it into the other. Over here, I think these are pretty easy to get alone. Doesn't matter which one you get alone. Which one you want to get alone? A. A, okay. So A equals 1 over C. So I take 1 over C and I plug it in for A. One fifth equals c times 1 over c squared. What is 1 over c squared? 1 over c squared, right? And what is c times 1 over c squared? Think of it like a c over 1 right now. It's just going to be c over c squared or 1 over c. One of those c's is going to cancel, 1 over c. Can you see what C equals? What does C equal? Five. Worst case scenario, if you didn't see it, you could always just cross multiply. You have a proportion there, right? Now, if C equals five, that means A should be really easy to find now. A equals one over C, or one over five. So your final answer, F of X equals C, which was five, A, one fifth, to the x power, and you cannot simplify any further than that. Although tempting, do not multiply the 5 and the 1 fifth there, not like terms. Any questions? Okay, we will finish up this lesson tomorrow. This homework is due on Friday. Remember, there are probably 30 questions on it, so it might be great to get a little head start with it tonight. Maybe you set it aside. Would that be wonderful? Have it done by Wednesday. How great would that be, y'all? Uh, yeah, if you have papers for me, drop them on my desk before you look at that. would be awesome. Self-up lotto! 20! We don't have one that rhymes.
Okay, for tomorrow. That's what our YouTube viewers are expecting. Okay, okay. 